Hello friends, welcome. Friends, first of all, thank you very much for showing interest in my channel. I have uh, seen a lot of questions that are being put in the comment section, which I try to respond as much as possible. Some of the questions I respond by writing a long note right in the comment section on, uh, you know, by doing reply. And some of the questions I try to respond by making a video. Now, friends, I try my level best to satisfy everybody. But just bear with me if I am not able to take all questions because it takes a lot of effort and to do some research before I answer. Otherwise, I don't want to do a shallow work. Right, friends? So in this video, I'm going to take this question because I thought this is a very important thing which people should know. The question is, sir, can you make a video on signal boosters? Why it is illegal in village or in Western Ghats? This is the only way to get signal, right? So friends, those people who do not understand how networks work, I think this will be a very good video for you to understand why signal boosters are illegal and sometimes why it is absolutely essential, right? So friends, what I've done, I have created a um, PPT. And I would like to tell you that there are two types of boosters. First is active boosters, which they call it active repeater. Another is called passive repeater. Now, the difference between active and passive repeater is very simple. Active repeaters are fed by an electrical power. It can be 230 volts, right? Generally, in our country, it is 230 volts. So as long as you have power coming to your house, you have to plug it into a power source. So what it will do is it will actively amplify the signal means as the signal is received in the antenna that will get actively amplified and it will give it will be feeding into the uh, the um, the indoor antenna or the booster antenna which kind of goes into the mobile phone so as to increase the power levels of the signal passive repeaters are simple repeaters which are just taking the signal and because it has got a yagi uda if you recall in in case of broadcasting the days when there was no DTH, you used to put a Yagi Uda antenna at the top of your uh, house to receive Doordarshan signal. I, I know when I was uh, in my, you can say in class 10, I don't remember exactly which class I was. I saw Asian Games, uh, Asian games uh, and that uh, I was able to see by putting an antenna right at the top of my house. And we had a TV installed at our room, drawing room. And we were watching, uh, uh, you know, Asian games by using this passive repeater. This antenna is nothing but you can say it's a repeater. What it does is it kind of extracts the signal from the air, amplifies it or kind of gives you a gain. And that signal is fed through the, the cable, coaxial cable, and it will go to the house and, and, that, and it goes in the TV. Right. So these are two different types of repeaters, passive repeaters and active repeaters. Now, friends. Why? Now the question is now why repeaters are illegal. Passive repeaters are not illegal, friends, because it does not boost signal. It kind of just channelizes the signal. It amplifies it. The gain of the antenna itself, uh, you know, channelizes the signal for better reception. It is like a better antenna, nothing else. So if you have a mobile, if you put an external antenna in the mobile, then your signal is going to get, become better because the receive the, instead of having a uh, omnidirectional antenna of the mobile, you have a directional antenna. That's all, right? But the illegal boosters are all active elements. Why it is active? Why it is illegal when it is active? Let me explain. Now, friends, this is the base station. Now, normally what would happen is you would receive signals from the base station, which is the downlink. So it will go directly to your mobile. And the mobile is going to transmit the signal normally without any repeater, right? So this is normal case, which is going to happen. Now, why do you need repeaters? First of all, the reason you need repeater is that when the mobile is transmitting back to the base station, the signal strength is not good enough for the base station to hear the mobile. Because base stations power transmission levels are typically very large is very high. Normally, the mobile will hear the base station, but the base station is not able to hear the mobile because mobile is transmits at a very low power. Because of what? Because of mitigating interference, EMF, sorry, because of electromagnetic uh, uh, field. 
which can impact the human body. So from a regulatory point of view, the power is set to a low level so that it does not interfere or does not cause harm to the human body. And therefore, the mobile, when it transmits to the base station, the base station may not hear, right? So in order for the base station to hear the mobile, what you do, you feed the mobile signal to a booster and that booster will then transmit the signal um, to the base station. And that is the uplink signal. Generally, uplink signal is what gets amplified most. Even the downlink signal will also get amplified. But what you are concerned with mainly is that your mobile is able to reach the base station. Mainly that's the, because the coverage of the base station is always driven by the uplink signal. Though downlink is also very important, right? But uplink part is the most important, right? So this is how the boosters will work. Now, why it is illegal? Let's talk about that. Because in this picture above, if you see here, I have, to, I have, I have mentioned two different things. One is oscillation. Another is uplink interference. We are going to discuss both of this, uh, you know, very clearly. And we will, um, uh, you know, uh, go through both uh, both the aspect why these are going to create a problem, right? Uplink interference and oscillation. Now, let's talk about oscillation. What is oscillation? So, in order to explain oscillation, let me make you understand that how the booster works. So, booster has got an outdoor unit and then it's an indoor unit. Outdoor unit is typically set in a place where you have a better reception of the signal, right? For example, in the rooftop of the house or some place where there is a clear line of sight to the base station or the signal strength is pretty high. Because if you have seen that we have a mobile in your hand, you always look for, you know, where the signal is. You keep on searching signal, right? So, outdoor unit will always be placed in a place where signal is normally available. And then what it will do is this outdoor unit is going to receive the signal from the base station. And then it is going to amplify it or send it to the indoor unit and the indoor unit and then transmit within the house where you have a mobile. Let's say if you have a mobile here, mobile will hear the base station because what is happening is this outdoor unit is pushing the signal to the indoor unit and the indoor unit is pushing it back to the mobile. Now, why there is an oscillation? That is important to understand. Oscillation means what? and what kind of problems it will create. Now, what happens is that whenever, you know, you are receiving the signal from the base station, let's say this is the outdoor unit and receive signal from the base station. When it receives the signal from the base station, what happens is that the amplification of the signal depends upon how much power it is receiving. If it is seeing very low power, it will amplify it in a such a way that signal can be making sense to the mobile. Otherwise, it will not make any sense, right? So what happens is, if these two units, the indoor unit and the outdoor unit are placed close to each other, then the signal which is normally being received from a base station, which is coming to the outdoor unit, the indoor unit which is transmitting to the signal to the mobile, this signal is going to spill over here into the outdoor unit again. So it will become a loop. It will become a loop. You understand? So when it becomes a loop like this, it will cause an oscillation. You might have seen, you know, for example, let's say if you have a microphone, right, on, TV on, and you are, let's say, recording some show and the TV is also on. You might have seen that there will be oscillation and the, and the volume will keep on increasing. Everybody has noticed that. So when this kind of oscillation takes place, when the signal from the indoor unit feed back to the outdoor unit, again to the indoor unit, again feed back to the outdoor unit, the amplification is so large that it kind of creates so much disturbance that it will disturb the neighboring base stations. There will be a lot of base stations here. So the signal strength will become so high that it will spill over and it will go to the other site locations which will receive signals, unwanted signals, which they normally will not like to receive. Because mobile, if there is a mobile here, that mobile will transmit at a normal power. But the outdoor unit is not governed by the EMF rules and it is not going to be close to the body. So the transmissions, even if there are certain, you know, parameters which are set, it is going to be much higher than the mobile. And the antennas are not properly set you know, which is targeted to looking toward the base station, right? 
So sometimes, you know, because of this, this oscillation, the power levels become so high that it will contaminate the nearby base stations, right? And it is going to cause capacity loss in the base station. So it, so this is one of the, this is the problem with the uplink. Now let's talk about the, uh, sorry, this is a problem with the oscillation. So the oscillation creates problem and it will spill over into nearby base station and pull the capacity of the whole network down. Now, effect of uplink signal boosting on network performance. So there are two types of, in, uh, of impact. One is the oscillation, another was the uplink. Because I told you the major problem that we have with the uplink. Normal scenario, this is the normal scenario. In the normal scenario with the mobile, which is talking to the base station, and it transmits as a certain power, and that power is received. And since the overall network is intelligent, a mobile will know how much power it has to transmit. Because this whole thing acts like an integrated network. Right? It will, it will not consider the base station and the mobile in isolation. Everything acts as an integrator because there is constant signaling information which is flowing there. Every part of the network is intelligent. So managing the power of the mobile such that it is only optimal, set at an optimal level so that the, it does not increase the noise floor. Because as soon as you start raising the power levels, People who don't want to hear you, they will face noise. They will treat you as noise. And you have to mitigate that noise. And that is the problem with the signal booster, which boosts the signal to such a level that the overall noise floor level will increase, which will pull the capacity of the base station down. Right? So that's the whole problem. The network capacity is going to be pulled down. Right? And that is where... We had this problem and we kind of get into a very serious problem. And therefore, the operators kind of are always looking towards this illegal booster, which is creating a huge problem to their license spectrum. Because the license spectrum that they have they have got from the from DOT through paying through such a huge amount of money from you know through their nose, they don't want the capacity of the system go down and this illegal signal boosters they create a capacity drain in their overall system. Now, coming back to the question, in Western Guard and villages, there is only way to get signal. There is no problem in village or in Western Guard. Why? Because the base station density is very, very low. Sometimes the base station is a single base station with no nearby base station. So if you have a single base station, right, and the signal is not reaching you, then even if you are transmitting at a very, very high power here and there is a booster which is kind of raising the power levels to such a level, there are no nearby base station to get contaminated. So sometimes the boosters will work perfectly fine if it is not contaminating a nearby base station because of the reasons I explained, the oscillation and uplink interference. And that is the reason why sometimes the boosters are the only way to get signal. And therefore, there is no problem with you in a village or an isolated area where the base station density is very low. And therefore, you have no problem. But in a area, in a setting where the base station is very, very high and indoor, if you look at the spectrum bands that we are using today in India, indoor penetration is a problem because low frequency bands are not there. So what happens is that Outside you will get signal, but in, inside, let's say 3.5 uh, 5 gigahertz band, outside you will get, but inside you, you will not get. Suppose you want the 5G spectrum to be inside your home also, you will boost the signal to such a level that it will pull down the overall capacity because inside inside here, there is no signal inside the room. So you want to, within, the, within your house, you, oh, this is the only way to boost the signal. Now friends, there is another option that people will have which will can can help them, uh, you know, raise the, uh, you know, ele elevate the network performance and, uh, you know, prevent these dark spots, which are, which is called small cells. Now, there's a difference between small cells and there is a difference between signal boosters because signal boosters are not intelligent devices. They simply take in and boost the signals and pull and push them out. So these are not intelligent devices. Whereas if there was a, cell site with a, with a which is called a pico cell then it acts in an integrated fashion in the overall network and it makes sure that the performance of the overall system does not go down it does not get suppressed because of all these kinds of interferences because what it will do it will hand off 
because it will treat the whole network as an integrated network and any device which is working in that network will be positioned in such a way that the overall network works most efficiently and the spectrum usage is done in the most efficient manner. So that's all friend. I think you have understood that why illegal boosters are the biggest problem with <laughs> for the mobile operators and why it should not be used in a indiscriminate manner because it will pull the overall capacity of the network down because noise is the only, you can say it is the biggest problem with the net which a licensed operator faces because his whole purpose is to mitigate this interference which is coming from neighboring base stations. That's why the base stations are down tinted so that the coverage does not spill over to a neighboring base station. So you will like the network to be optimized. If you see BSNL network still not optimized, that's why you are facing so, so, so much problem. So if a network has been tuned and optimized and suddenly you place all these boosters, the whole network performance will go down because the, the optimization which has been done will get disturbed, right? So that's all friends in this video. I don't think there is anything else is required to be said here. And thanks for listening till the end and I'll come back with a new video on a new topic next time. Thank you very much friend.